we just talked a lot about the orbitals and how to describe the energy, the shape, the orientation in space, all of that. This is just another representation of the energy levels of the orbitals. So you can see if n equals 1, that's energy level 1. So if n equals 1, um, then L, right, L is going to equal L. L equals 0. So you're going to have an s orbital. And only, that's the only possibility. For n equals 2, right, energy level 2, L can be 0 or 1, and if L is 0, you have an s orbital. If L equals 1, boy, it's not working, you have a p orbital. And then if n equals 3, you can have an s, a p, or a d orbital. So if all you had in there was one, uh, one electron, well, you can put it in any of these orbitals. Now usually, if you, you want the ground state, you would just put one electron down here. Um, but you know, if you only had one electron in your entire atom, all these orbitals would be equivalent, they would all be degenerate, right? Anything in this line is degenerate, has the same energy, and energy level three, or everything, all the orbitals in energy level two would have the same energy. What happens when you have more than one electron um, and you start putting them in these orbitals? And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build up to you know, putting all the electrons in these orbitals and figuring out what the electron configuration is for that atom. Um, but when you start putting the electrons in here, they repel each other and so the orbitals shift a little bit and you get the different spacing. So you have 1s and then 2s and 2p. So you're going to fill them up when you start putting electrons in here. You're going to fill them up in this order. So this is going to be, we're going to see this diagram again when we start filling up electrons and putting them in this diagram. So each one of these boxes represents a different orbital. So you can see an s orbital, we only have one, one box. So you can put two electrons in any given um, orbital. And here, all the s's are going to have one block. P's, you have one, two, three, right? Because so we have three different P orbitals. We have um, one on each axis. S, there's only one, one orientation space. P have three, D have five, and if we had F, then we would have um, seven. So we said we can put two electrons in any given orbital, and that's because of the fourth quantum number, um, which is the spin quantum number. Now, the, the other three quantum numbers describe the orbital, right? They were describing the energy, the orbital, the shape, and its orientation in space. This last quantum number actually talks about the electron. It distinguishes one, distinguishes one electron from the other. And so the two values that you can have are plus one half, we call that one spin up, and uh, minus one half is spin down. So we have two electrons, we're going to represent them as arrows spin up, spin down, so you have two different electrons, and they've satisfied the Pauli exclusion principle, which basically says no two electrons in the same atom can have the same set of quantum numbers. Um, so again, if you're in the same orbital, then you have the same energy, you have the same um, shape, right? You have the same orientation in space, um, but you have um, your electrons, you, since you can put two in there, you have you have to be able to distinguish them. And so the fourth quantum number is how you can distinguish two electrons from each other. So let's actually start looking at writing these electron configurations. And if we had a term, just use like 4p5, right? 4p5, you're gonna see something like this in an electron configuration. This four means you're in, uh, that's the energy level. P is the type of orbital that you have here. And then this superscript, this is the new part that we're adding, is counting the number of electrons that you have in that orbital. And so we're gonna start building a whole bunch of these, these terms to help us figure out what the electron configuration is of, for an atom. Um, that's, that's pretty much like giving the electrons an address. So to make the orbital diagrams, and then from, from the orbital diagram, we will generate the electron configuration. Uh, we're gonna use this diagram again over here. And each one of these box represents an orbital and you can put two electrons in each orbital two electrons in each orbital, and Hund's rule says you're going to fill up, half fill, I'm sorry, fill up the orbitals from the lowest energy possible. So we're going to start down here, filling up these electrons, put two electrons in each orbital. Um, once you get to P's, we're going to half fill all these orbitals before we double pair them. So anything in that, in that given energy level, um, ha put them all spin up and then spin down. You'll see, let's see what, what we mean for that. So let's just, it's easier to just take an example. So let's look at lithium. Lithium has three electrons. And you remember that if you go over to, you know, lithium has one, two, three electrons here. It has that three up on top. So we're going to try to place these three electrons. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put these three electrons in here. 
Um, the first two are going to go in this energy level, one, two, and then three. So the orbital diagram really looks like I have a 1s, two electrons in there, um, and then I have my 2s, I have one electron in there. And so the electron configuration, I would write um, 1s, and I have two electrons there, and then in the 2s orbital, I only have one electron there. When I add up those superscripts, they should equal the number of electrons that I have total. So now let's try beryllium. Beryllium has four electrons. So I'm going to place the first two here, and then the second two here. And so my orbital diagram again looks like 1s, 2s, and then here I have 1s2, 2s2. Boron, you know, would be the same. Now you're going to put that in. Um, the p orbitals. Let's let's skip down to carbon. Carbon has six electrons, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. So for carbon, my orbital diagram looks like. All right, this is my one s, and you can put these in the little little boxes. Two s. I'm just using lines, and then I have two p. And you don't really have to put that extra uh, dash line there. I like to, to show that it's open. And the electron configuration is the 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And you're going to keep going and going and going. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at sodium. Let's try sodium. You can try the other two that I skipped there too, but let's try sodium has 11. Um, so I'm going to do one two, three, four, and then I'm going to go up five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten, and then I have one more that is eleven. So my orbital diagram looks like 1s, 2s, 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 3s1. So I have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, and then go ahead and count 2, 4, plus 6 is 10. That's 11. So they add up. So this is the orbital diagram, kind of using this diagram over here. And then the electron configuration, you're just going to read right off of that diagram. So I filled up 2 in my 1s orbital, so I have 1s2. I filled up 2 here, 2s2. I filled up 6 here, so this is 2p6. So it's always the energy, the shape of that orbital, and then how many electrons are in it, and then finally I have 3s1. So let's try another example. So in this question they want you to find the, write the electron configuration of phosphorus, which is element 15, and then uh, how many unpaired electrons does phosphorus have? All right, so if you look up here, what do we mean by unpaired electrons? So these are paired, right? There's two in each orbital. There's two here, there's two in all these orbitals, and then I have one unpaired electron. So sodium has one unpaired electron. Let's look at phosphorus. And let's, let's first do the orbital diagram for phosphorus, and then we will um, use the orbital diagram to help us write the electron configuration. So they told us that it's element 15, so I have 15 electrons. So all I want to do is place 15 electrons in this diagram. Uh, let's see, so I have 15, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So if I were if I just wanted to read off the electron configuration here, I have one S two, two S two, two P six, three S two, 3p123. And if I add up on the top here, I have 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 6 is 10 plus 12 and then 15. So that's the electron configuration, and I have a total of three unpaired electrons. So that's three unpaired electrons. So that's part B.